Come here, Chip. Come here, Chip. Oh, he's so cute. He's so cute. Look at, look at that face. Look at that face. Want some snacks, huh? Want some snacks? Ooh, ooh. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel with Paradox the Wrapper. Today we're gonna get this 1957 Ford Fairlane started on the wrapping process. I'm gonna show you how to do the body work on an old hunk of junk like this and then get it looking all clean in the next video. We'll sand the whole thing down where it has issues on the paint like right here. Look at that. Flaking paint. So if you guys have a busted old car whether it's a 90s car or like a 50s car or whatever it is, your uncle's got one of these sitting in the backyard somewhere. Get it from him for dirt cheap. I'm gonna show you how to make this thing look good. <laughs> this thing is just a hoopy. So I'm gonna let it. I'm gonna let it warm up, and I'm gonna adjust the uh, the choke and stuff just to make sure that everything is it, it, it sounds good. And then we'll pull it over there, and then we'll get the whole thing started. Yeah, th this is not good. This is definitely uh, worse than I thought. Well, the, the belt's kind of loose. That's why it's making that noise. And on top of that, it took me like 30 minutes to start it. And uh, I did take it on a drive around the circle thing right there. And it doesn't really want to go uphill. So you know what that means. We're going to swap the motor on this thing ASAP. So stay tuned for that. I just can't deal with this carburetor business. This is too much. We're going to probably like LS swap it with something like LS1, LS2, LS3. Or maybe Jay-Z, let me know in the comments which one I should do. Should we just do like a, a BQDE swap then? <laughs> I don't know. But anything is probably better than this carburetor system. I just want to get in, turn it on, and then just drive away and enjoy the car. All right. So a lot of work to be done. But today I'm going to show you how to get the body work done for this so that if you want to wrap something like this, you can. So let's get started. Let's see what we're working with. Um, first off, this hood is totally toast, right? So look at that, all this paint is, all this used to be clear coat. I don't know if they did clear coat back in like the fifties or you know, whatever, but did they put clear coat on this and what happened? So. We're gonna basically sand down this whole hood, okay? Um, but the problem with sanding down a car like this is that you have to kind of wrap it right away. Otherwise, the elements will get to it. You don't wanna leave something like this just sitting outside sanded down because it's gonna start raining and it's not summertime. It's approaching, or it's pretty much winter now. So what you wanna do is as soon as I sand it, I'm gonna put it in the garage and we're gonna use the wrap to cover up the places that I sand. So that way, uh, the wrap will protect it for now for this season. Okay, so what we got to do is probably move some of this headlight stuff. Definitely got to take the bumper off. The bumper has rusted parts right here. So I'm going to probably sand that too, but maybe not do the bumper this time. I'm probably going to look for like a a person that can redo it in chrome so i do like the chrome on these cars because they're old school and I, you know i like I, I don't know why anyone would even want to chrome delete all this but um this needs to be hmm i'm probably going to end up spraying this with some black that way because i'm a wrapper i only have to wrap to like here and then the rest of these vents could be black or whatever 
we'll figure it out. Okay, uh, lots of weird paint issues here. So this is, oh, oh God. Oh no. Oh. Oh man, look at that. All right, probably gonna wire wheel all this off or something like that and then cover it with some primer um, just to make sure that it's good and then I'll wrap over it. Back here, we got all kinds of issues with the fading paint and all that stuff. So yeah, right here, the hell? This, yeah, all this needs to go. Like, why is that? What's happening here? Okay, so I'm gonna just kind of sand that down and see what's under here. And then if we need to bondo it, we'll bondo it. And then we'll uh, primer it and that'll be good for wrapping. Um, yeah, this whole thing, look at that. Basically, you just gotta sand everything. Look at these, jeez. Is that rust? Oh man. All right, yeah, so I'm probably just gonna sand all that down um, as best as I can, and then we'll just we'll just put some primer and maybe bondo on it and see what happens. You really can't mess up any more than it already is. Um, the body shop that's gonna be doing like the full kit on this thing later on when we go wide body, uh, they'll be doing all the other stuff that I messed up on anyway. So I'm not too worried about doing it incorrectly. What I do know is what I've done on my 90s cars and it's been fine so far so that's basically get rid of the rust wire wheel it down sand it smooth and then bondo over any uh any divots that we need to bondo over spray some primer on it sand the primer and we're good to go so that's really all you need to do on this particular car um if i don't do it right let me know in the comments what you would do. What I've seen before is people actually cut out all the whole rust, like literally just go in here with a with a, a hacksaw or something and just cut the rust out and then just, um, what do you call it? Weld on new pieces and then just redo it. But I don't have a welder. I don't know how to weld yet. So in the meantime, we're gonna do it my way. And then when we take it to uh, a body shop, let's say like works custom, they're gonna just wide body it for me and then we'll we'll do the whole shebang and get them the body prepped and good to go so that i can continually wrap it without having any issues all right let's get started i'll take you along with all the little parts that i'm gonna do and then uh we'll see what the end results look like <laughs> this is quite daunting but if you guys uh, check out what my end results are. I'll show them right here. Okay, so this is my vision for how I want it to be. So check out this car Check out this one and then check out this one Those are kind of examples of the vision that I have for this thing and what I want to do to it The goal is to make this a sick looking tire shredder, but for now we're gonna get this thing ready And we're gonna slap a new color on it as soon as we're done with the body work. So let's get started for any car, you're gonna start with these basic things as far as wrapping goes. Painting, I don't know, I'm not a painter, so uh, let me know in the comments if the prep or paint is the same. Here we got a 220 sanding net. You can get this from Home Depot. I like the net better than the uh, regular sandpaper just because it tends to last longer. And of course, I got one of these hand sanders that you know, are mechanical, uh, you can plug this into the wall and it will basically do all the hard work for you. When it comes to sanding like really fine areas, then you don't want to use this. You want to use it by, use a block or use it by hand, but this will generally get the job done to clean up all of this mess.
here we got some really nasty rust it's kind of bubbling up on the panel itself uh, you can see the paint just chipping off here and then some over there as well so i think for this one i'm gonna hit it with a wire wheel first um what, that i'm gonna attach to my screwdriver and then we'll hit it with a sander This is definitely more involved than I really want to be. <laughs> but it's too late now. There's no going back. So what we got to do, what the hell? Oh my goodness. This is all over the car. Like it looks good from far away when you get up to it. If you try to wrap over this, you will see all of that through the wrap. So that's got to be sanded. But this is a hole in the door. So um i know the proper way to do this is probably just to cut out this part of the metal like right here and then just weld in a new piece and then sand it again or whatever make it make it flush but i don't have a welder so we're gonna do uh for the purposes of this just slap some bondo into there and then just let it dry and then we'll sand it again and then we'll we'll primer over the bondo that way the the wrap will stick so uh that will serve my purposes temporarily until i get this thing like done the right way so uh i'll continue this process over here over here and over here uh, and the back and i'll show you guys the result all right putting a lot of work on the other side i haven't even gotten to this side yet and it's starting to get dark but i ran to home depot and got myself some uh, high bond bondo never used this particular one before so we're gonna see how that goes and then i did switch to a 80 grit sand net right there because the 220 it was just going way too long like it's definitely not rough enough to get like all of this gnarly bad paint spots right here and like where it's kind of just peeling up all over the place um right there so we're gonna go with a harder grit all you gotta remember is when you go with a harder grit, just don't press as hard and just try it on like a, a smaller part, like down lower on the car. Uh, but at the end of the day, you really can't mess this up. The only time this is bad is probably, you, you'll just probably hit uh, metal faster. So you try and do like an even sand, like right down here. Um, you're probably gonna sand a lot quicker with a harder grit. So just try it. Uh, the 220 definitely is not enough on a sand net to do this maybe like regular uh, sandpaper um thing and not the net would work but as far as these go uh it was either 80 or 60 i went with the 80 so i'll let you know how it goes it's definitely gonna cut through this stuff faster especially like right here so i'm anticipating once i get to here i'm gonna like get some more holes like this and what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna glop the bondo onto there and then sand the bondo smooth once it's dry we'll see how that goes oh see that's the angle right there i can already see it in my head where we're gonna extend this thing maybe give it a little bit of, you know like a side flare change the exhaust on that thing to make like a fatter pipe and like make it look more aggressive uh, a wide body fender and then a wide body fender in front with these oh these flares is what i really love about this card like the way this angles up maybe we'll extend it and make it like a little higher maybe like an inch and like a two more inches back or something like that that would be sick with the way with the way this window Ooh. all right so 
We're back on day two of the body work for the Fairlane. So right here, this part, I uh, pretty much got the trunk good to go. I'm just gonna hit it with the uh, 220 after going over the 80 grit. And then I'm gonna fill this up with Bondo here because I don't know what the heck is going on here. It looks like there's like a divot and someone tried to Bondo it, but they didn't do a very good job because it started cracking. So we're gonna really um, get this right. And then I gotta continue with all of this stuff right here. So, I mean, I sanded it down to just the metal and you can see like it's because of the rust it's starting to pit a little bit but um the bondo should fix all that i don't know maybe i'll just spray some like self-etching primer and just bondo these little holes right here and then the self-etching primer should be able to kind of seal this off until we really deal with it but the rest of the car needs to be sanded still over here so i won't bore you guys with that i'll just show you the final bondo part um where we just mix up some Bondo, slap it onto there. So um, I'm gonna get my mixer plate right here. And then I got my plastic spreaders. And uh, this is the Bondo, like I said, we're gonna be using that. And then we'll get started wrapping this whole thing. All right, so you never whipped up some Bondo before? Here you go, you gotta just pop the can open here. And then you're gonna take uh, like a popsicle stick I eat popsicles, I keep the sticks. And I'm gonna just dollop in a nice, a nice fat chunk of it. Um, of course, this is not the only batch I'm gonna make. I'm gonna make some more, but this is good for first initial batch. And then you got your uh, nice little hardener tube right here. So you're gonna take the tube. Ooh, this one's blue. Ooh, okay. Previously, these used to be, uh, kind of reddish i've never seen a blue one before so you're just gonna daub it in there like that okay that's plenty of hardener maybe that's even too much so if you are looking at it right there that's how much i use for that much and then i'm gonna take my mixer i'm gonna just fold it over uh oh Okay, we gotta go hands free here. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, there we go. Hands free. Okay. I previously used to, uh, I used to just swirl around. You, you're not really gonna wanna do that apparently because you don't want it to um, have air bubbles. So, definitely don't want air bubble in this. Uh, scrape that off here. Okay, and then you're going to just mix it like that. This is interesting. I never used blue Bondo before. It's always been kind of like, like pink color. Okay, so now that you have plenty on there, this is probably going to dry within like 15 minutes. So you're going to want to be fast once you do this. Okay, so I'm going to keep mixing, mixing. And I'm going to take a dollop here. We're just going to take some nice amount here. And then we're going to spread it on our spot. So right here, we're just going to, yeah, there you go. Just glop it on there. Kick that sucker on there. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Just, just give me a nice one. Nice fat piece, there you go. Let's cover all that up. All that nastiness up. So you see how it's gonna like kind of bubble out here? What you're gonna do there is, uh, I don't know, I'm just gonna glop it on there. And of course, some of it's gonna bubble out. And then you just sand it off. So. So I'm just gonna get some nice coverage there. Okay. Okay. 
and then we'll get to sanding once it's dry and kind of just smooth everything out smooth those bubbles and all that stuff and then um we'll put on another layer after it's hardened okay so that's that there then over here we're going to do the same thing over here we're going to take some more bondo okay and we're just gonna yeah just clop it on there nice and easy just like that we don't want to get stuff on surfaces that we don't want it on so let's scrape it off of this so it's a pain in the ass to like sand it off parts that you don't want bondo on <laughs> so make sure that you just clean it up as best as you can before it dries fully so we're just gonna shove a crap ton of bondo into there you're probably saying to yourself paradox you're doing this all wrong you're not supposed to bondo the rusty surface with holes in it okay i understand but i don't have a welder guys i don't have a welder so this is gonna be the way it is for now uh let me know in the comments if you're a painter or a body man or you know someone that does body work on cars and stuff like that let me know if by bondoing over these holes does it get worse like that over time let's say you let's say you just do this right and you wrap over it or paint over it or whatever let's say you paint over this um after after we're totally done with like you know sanding and everything with primer and all that stuff over time does it get more rusty under this bondo or not and if so uh what happens afterwards like does the whole panel like does the whole door like rust out or how's that work okay let me know in the comments i'm just some guy doing this in my backyard not a professional this is kind of annoying how it, how it keeps bubbling out, but um, I think that's fine for now. We'll see what it looks like once we sand it. Okay. There we go. Got to clean this up a little bit here. Clean this up here. Okay. I don't want any excess on these other parts. All right, we'll leave that as that. And then we're gonna go to our last spot. Way over here on this side. We're gonna glop the remaining Bondo onto here, okay? You can, you can tell it's starting to get like kind of viscous already. So we're gonna whip up a new batch pretty soon here. Yeah, get it in there. Okay. And that's just it. You want to take... Uh, you want to take your... Your popsicle stick and get a lot of this off too. And spread it on there. Oh, it's starting to chunk up. You see that? Chunking up on me. No good. Okay, we might have to, uh, we might have to just make a new batch because I don't want chunks on here at all. I just want it nice and smooth. Look at these chunks. No good. Like a sculptor or a painter, you just work that puppy. Okay, yeah, we need a new batch. Anyway, you get the idea, you get the idea. I'm gonna clean all this chunkiness off and then whip up a new batch and lay it down. I'll show you guys what kind of looks like after it's sanded and then we'll finish off this video. Okay, it's dry. I got my mask on, that's why I sound all crazy. I'm using a 220 uh, grit to start with. Because this stuff can get broken up really quickly if you use the, uh, the, the lower grit.
this stuff does sand very nicely. Look at that. Mmm, very nice. Okay, so I can still feel a little bit of a divot here. Those holes are now gone, so which is nice. Uh, I can still feel like a little bit rough right here. So, um, I'm probably just going to do another quick layer on here. Lightly. When I do the next batch for the, the part up there. And then we're going to go over here and sand this. But another uh, quick light layer on this will do the trick. And then this, the wrap won't stick to it. So you got to spray primer over this. Um, because the surface of the Bondo is kind of powdery, but that's looking super slick. Ah! And there you have it. This part's actually very quick. See how smooth that is? Ooh. <laughs> okay, so even though you can still see, like, a spot right here, the transition from here to here is perfectly smooth. I can't feel the difference with my hands if I close my eyes. So, this is kind of what you want it to be and then you know you're gonna have some excess bondo and stuff like that you can just cut that off with a razor um similar you can just clean it up down here and that's it bondoing is actually pretty easy once you're done sanding the sanding part is what takes the gnarliest amount of time okay it's getting dark and i'm just about done so let's go over what i've done so far um right here you see how i taped all this off and i sanded this down so that it's just down to the metal now and it's just like a little bit of you know like rusted but like you know very aged metal so it's not rusted um there's just little dimple spots and stuff like that so i'm probably gonna just put some quick bondo over this just to smooth all this out because if you can feel it with your hand when you put the wrap on you can see it definitely make sure to touch it with your hand or what you can do is um, put a, a little piece of wrap right here and you can see all the little textures on the wrap. So if you don't like that, I suggest you bondo it and then primer it real quick and then you can wrap it. Um, down here, we got some more rust spots that I gotta fill in. Right here, you can see some previous bondo work that was done by someone else who previously owned this car. So it's not like she's a new girl to this thing, you know what I mean? She's been around the block a couple times. Right here, sanded that down too, so it feels rather smooth, but I'm gonna get a piece of like, um, a piece of sandpaper that I can hold with my hand and I'm just going to kind of run it through here so I don't feel that anymore. Up here, we sanded all this down. It looked like this. So anywhere where there's this stuff, that's going to come off on your wrap. So you want to make sure you sand that down as well. On the roof, we got some more rust that I got to work on. But the rest of it is pretty smooth. The trunk, oh, that was really bad. Look at all this. Look at this. Okay. There's a spot right here. There's all these kind of like rusty spots. So I had to like expand where I'm sanding. So uh, these can show through your wrap. If you're trying to wrap the car, let's say you wrap it in a white color, you can probably see the difference between this and this if it's like a white um, or kind of like a see-through wrap. So you want to test some wrap on here just to be sure that you don't see the difference in the color change in the panel otherwise you want what you want to do is just color match this whole panel with primer and you're good to go over here i haven't done the bondo here yet but the rest of this is pretty smooth and looks good about ready to go down here this is super slick once again just a little more bondo there more bondo there need some bondo there that is pretty good pretty good okay and then right here I got some holes I got to plug these for where the canisters go, but I don't think I'm going to put those back on. I'm going to put the um, the rear view mirrors up here somewhere or something like that. I don't know. I've, I've seen classic cars with them. Looks very slick, very slick. And then uh, that's about it. So what I'm going to do off camera is take this bumper off. I'm already like fighting it right here. Look, and I chopped this screw because this is seized on to that and this attached to this and it went right here so yeah um lots of rusted bolts <laughs> i gotta get it through um up here this section is really gnarly we're just gonna spray this black 
Okay, I'm gonna just tape it off, spray it black. Um, I'll probably go over this in the next portion, and I'll just show you guys that real quick before we start wrapping. But yeah, guys, that's about it. <laughs> she does not look very good right now. It looks like a hot mess. You have to look ugly before it can get better, okay? Trust me, once this is done, it's gonna look great. Even if it's in the stock form, okay? A stock Fairlane or a stock 50s car, uh, it's okay. I mean, I like how like handcrafted it looks. Like it's such a unique style and this is all like handmade, right? But uh, once we lower this thing and get some wheels on it and get the wide body on it, ooh, it's gonna look so nasty. I like the wide body look. I don't know about, I don't know about the back uh, fender if I still want the wheel covered or not. But when we're going like, you know, we're on like 20s deep dish, uh, I don't know. I've seen a couple of, of uh, the classic cars that are done around and they have a deep dish made for them and they still have the tucked look. I don't really like that. I think we're going to go lip to fender just like the uh, 90s cars that we got going on here. We're probably going to go with the, you know, the hella flush fitment. So let me know what you guys think. Oh man, okay. Guys, this is gonna be a project and a half. But first, uh, this is how I mod this is how I modify cars. Is for me to be really motivated to do a car, it has to look good first. So a lot of people do the engine work, suspension, uh, interior, all that stuff first, uh, or exhaust or whatever. I prefer to make the car look good by wrapping it first. And then once it looks good, then we can lower it and do wheels and all that stuff. You know, it, it just inspires me to do more once the car looks good. So until next time, guys, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you guys think about this body work. And if I'm doing it right or wrong or whatever, comment, hit that like button. Let me know what you guys think about this project so far. And if this is your first time doing body work, don't be scared. You really can't mess up if the car is already messed up, okay? <laughs> So until next time guys, like, comment, subscribe. I'm gonna hop in the shower. <laughs> Super dirty. Oh, look at this, look at this. Whoa. Whoa. Okay, so yeah, that's the only bad part about this. The body work is uh, the sanding. It just gets everywhere. So you have to kind of do it outside. So until next time, like, comment, subscribe. I'll catch you guys later.